Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the child tax credit. Now the child tax credit was added to it, the, the term family tax credit, and we're going to see why in a moment. So what is the purpose of the child tax credit? Well, it's a benefit designed to help families with what? With raising children. So if you have children, the U.S. government wants to help you raise those children. It's simply put, it's a provision of the tax code that provides financial help to qualifying taxpayer that have dependent children. Well, the main goal is to reduce the tax burden of the family, to help you raise a family. Especially, it's going to benefit the most, people with lower and middle income, and to provide additional financial support to help raise the children. That's the whole purpose of it. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So who's eligible for this child tax credit? Well, to qualify for the child tax credit, you must have a qualifying child. Now, what is a qualifying child? We discussed qualifying child in a separate recording, but that qualifying child under the age of 17, very important, by the end of the tax year 1231. So a child, a qualifying child under the age of 17. Now, qualifying children could include dependent children, subchildren, grandchildren, siblings, nieces, and nephews. Those are included. The child also must be a U.S. citizen or a resident alien, have a social security number, so it's a person that exists, not a pet, and must be claimed as a dependent on your federal income tax return. So if you don't know the dependency rules and the qualifying child, make sure you view those related lectures, but that's all what you need to know for the eligibility. Now, how much do you get in a, for a child tax credit? Well, the amount is $2,000 and the amount is refundable. Well, certain tax credits are refundable, others are not. What is a refundable tax credit? A refundable tax credit means even if you have zero tax liability, you don't owe the government any money. You have zero tax liability. Nevertheless, we will give you the $2,000. So if you owe the government $400, this is how much is your tax bill. Here comes the child tax credit. It will wipe out your bill and gives you a check. They will send you a check for $1,600. Why? Because this, this is a refundable. If the tax, if the child tax credit was not refundable, then what's going to happen? If you owe the government $400, then you could only use $400 to bring your liability down to zero. Well, the child tax credit is refundable. It's going to go above and beyond. Even if you don't owe the government any money, you'll get the additional $2,000. Now, bear in mind, there's a phase out. And the phase out, now I'm going to show you the phase out for the... Uh, uh, for now, but these phase out could change. It doesn't matter whether you are in year 25 or year 27. The concept is the same. However, the phase out will change. Now, if you're studying for the CPA exam, the phase out amount will be given to you. That's not a problem. You don't have to memorize the phase out. However, you have to know how to compute the reduction in the in the amount of the tax credit. And I'm going to show you how. But for now, we're going to we're going to use phase out. If you're married filing jointly, once you go above 400,000, you will start to lose. And once you go above 200,000 as a single or anything other than married filing jointly, your child tax credit will be reduced. Now, how much will it be reduced by? Well, the credit is reduced $50 for each $1,000 or the fraction of that, that's over the amount of the threshold, and you'd always round up. So simply put, if you're married filing jointly, and your modified adjusted gross income, or adjusted gross income is 40,500, you're gonna round up to 40,000 and 1,000. So this 500 becomes 1,000, and you are 1,000 above, it means you have to reduce your credit by $50. So rather than 2,000, your credit becomes 1,950. And you'll keep reducing this until your credit goes down to zero. 
Now, why did we say this credit? Now it's called family tax credit. The reason is because they added to this something called a family credit or a 500 non-refundable family credit. So if you have someone in your household, like maybe another child over the age of 18, means over 18, but less than 24 full-time students, but they're qualifying dependent, but they are not qualifying children, they are qualifying dependent, the government will give you an additional 500. Notice this is a non-refundable. So if you have a child who's above 17, which is 18 to 24, full-time student, they don't qualify as a qualifying child for the child tax credit, but they would, they would qualify under the family tax credit, and that amount is $500, but that amount is non-refundable. So if you, if you don't have a tax liability, you don't get, you don't take advantage of this. Or if you have elderly parents living with you as qualifying dependent, or then they will qualify you for this additional $500. And that's why it's called family slash uh, child tax credit. It was always known by the child tax credit. Let's take a look at a few examples. Now we have a single parent with a modifying adjusted gross income of $213,200 and one child age five. Now we're going to compute the child tax credit for this, for this single parent. Well, here's what's going to happen. Generally speaking, what's the amount of the credit? Generally speaking, the amount of the credit is 2000 However, this is since it's a single, I mean, it's not married, a single parent. What's going to happen is we're going to be subject to the limitation. How do we know how much do we qualify for? Well, we said anything other than married filing jointly, you're going to have to start to cut down on this credit above 200000 Now, the individual is would have a modified adjusted gross income or adjusted gross income of 213200 which is 13200 above well 13200 basically you have to round it up to 14000 because we're going to divide by 1000 so if we're going to go 13200 divide by 1000 we are 13.2 points above the threshold well we're going to round up to 14 now we are 14 multiples 14 1000 dollar above for each one, we're going to reduce it. For each thousand, we're going to re reduce the credit by 50. We're going to reduce the credit by 700. Therefore, the credit initially is 2,000 minus 700 because we, we are above the threshold and the amount is 1,300. Let's take a look at another example. A single parent with a modified of 92,000 with three children, 6, 10, and 11. Good. 6, 3, and 11, three children, each 2,000. Well, the individual is below 200000 The amount of credit is $6,000. Let's take a look at, now at a married couple filing jointly with a modified of 407368 and two children ages 13 and 15. Now, if we don't, if we were not above the 400000 this married couple would qualify for the 4000 But since we are above 400000 we have to compute the limitation. So we are 4,368 above this amount. We'll take this amount divided by 1,000 and 7.37. We always round up, we round up to 8. Now we're going to take 8 multiplied by $50 and we're going to lose $400 from the credit. So it's going to be 4,000 minus 400. The amount is 3,600. Let's take a look at another example. A married couple filing jointly with a modified AGI of $133,098 with one child, age 12. How much is the credit? Well, the credit is $2,000. Uh, they're below the threshold. The amount is $2,000. No limitation applies here. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures. Look at additional resources, multiple choice, true-false, additional lectures. That's going to help you with your tax credit accounting courses, CPA exam, or whatever accounting certification enrolled agent or any other accounting certification that you are studying for. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.